has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we're back. Hour number two, Pharrell Coast to Coast here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty right here on the grid. Good to have you aboard with us. Uh, all right, Cam, we have uh, more baseball from last night to fly through before we get into tonight's games. Uh, I'm also keeping an eye, Cam, on our boy, uh, the Gim Reaper uh, out here. Yep. I told you, Doug Gim, uh, we've got him up against Shank and the Steel Mill. Uh, Shank out to a minus three. So we got a T28 right now, Shank. He's also uh, played pretty well through 10 holes. Charlie Hoffman made another birdie too, Cam. So Hoffman uh, looking strong to maybe, maybe catch or surpass uh, Finau and Pendrith uh, right now. Oh, so something God. else uh, to keep our eye on. Uh, Mariners beat the Rangers last night, Cam. I'm sorry. This game ended after we yeah. got off the air. How did they do that? Julio Rodriguez back in a big way on Root Sports. That will plenty do it. Say goodbye, Julio. Off the scoreboard, a three-run jack in the Mariners. Have a 4-2 lead. What a world to live in with Julio Rodriguez. Wow, his 18th home run. Three more RBIs. Chang is 56th in the Mariners. Yeah, we both, Cam, uh, got a little snake bit on those in-game plays we had yesterday. The Astros couldn't get it done for me. The Rangers at least had a lead, and they couldn't get it done for you up in Seattle. No, that was frustrating. They came back, took the lead, and then Rodriguez ruined the dream, had Texas plus one. Hey, that's live betting, Carver. We thought we had a good number there, and uh, we lose the bet. But, hey, Rodriguez is back for Seattle. That's bad news for the rest of the teams in the American League. That kid's amazing. Uh, certainly is. They could uh, use him to do a couple big things in Houston this weekend uh, over those yep. four games, that's for sure. Uh, the Jays with a little bit of a no-show last night against the Redbirds up in Toronto. 6-1. to one. Cardinals beat the Jays. Big night for Albert Pujols, Cam. That's right. They let the old man get the job done on Bally Sports Midwest. Runners at first and third and two outs. Albert lifts it in the air out to center, and that's number seven. Wow. 686 bombs in what could be his final appearance here in Toronto. Number five is putting on a show. Did you see where that ball landed? Wow. That's somebody's dinner up there in the restaurant. He's three for three. He's a triple away from the cycle. He's a, did you hear your man, Cam? He's a triple away from the cycle. Can you imagine your boy, Albert? <laughs> Albert getting around for the triple uh, at, at, this, yeah. at the he Rogers smoked Center that ball, last though, night. In the Windows, Windows <laughs> restaurant there. That's a, that's a big moonshot. No, the Jays didn't come to play last night. Adam Wainwright was dealing. Got to, got to hand it to the Cardinals. The Jays will do that, uh, Car Carver. Yeah. Big favorites, parlay busters. That's what it's all about, man. It's weird. Kansas City rolled in there with 10 unvaccinated players. They gave them fits. Cardinals are without two of their best players. That's just the, the Blue Jays. I told you, too much dancing, not enough baseball. Let's go. Uh, that's for sure. Let's hear from Albert uh, right now, Cam. Of course, he's loving this final season, uh, and the red carpet gets rolled out for him wherever he goes. Albert Pujols. Pretty special. You know? It means a lot to me, uh, you know, my last year of my career and be able to you know, to enjoy this year and uh, just to travel around and just uh, seeing the appreciation of the fans uh, means a lot. You know, at the end of the day, that's who you play for. You know, these guys, uh, the fans come in. We have the best fans in baseball, the Cardinals fans, and they come to support us, you know, whether we're in home or we're there in the row. And, uh, you know, just to have the appreciation here, you know, uh, across the border uh, by Toronto is uh, pretty special to me. Uh, but at the end of the day, I still need to focus, you know, and try to do my job and help this ball club to win. Even in a place he barely played, Cam, they rolled the red carpet out for him. Toronto. He didn't see Toronto that much. Obviously, he came in a couple times with the Angels, but uh, really not too many games in Toronto for Albert. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates. Pharrell Coast to Coast on a Thursday, Sirius XM 159 Sports Map Sports Byline. 
Good to have everybody along with us today. Cleveland beats the Red Sox again last night, 7-6. Tied at 6 in the ninth. Cam. Josh Naylor with the go-ahead homer in the ninth on Bally Sports Cleveland. There goes Naylor, driving one to deep left field. Up go. and over the green monster, and the Guardians go on top. Boy, what a swing. One of the few times we've seen a left-handed hitter other than Nolan Jones stay back and really drive one to the opposite field. And it was on the slider, his best pitch he likes to go to. Red Sox got to think about some things over the next few days, Cam, uh, with that trade deadline yep. on Tuesday. I know they've already said we're not trading Bogarts, we're not trading Devers. They can say that stuff all they want. Uh, whether they like it or not, they're sellers. I know they don't like hearing yeah, it, but they are. Miller, you guys call me the prime minister? Well, he's, uh, he, he's basically the mayor of Mississauga, where I'm from. Like, literally, Naylor like, lives right down the street there, Carver. This guy's an Does absolute he? stud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he grew up in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto there. And uh, let me tell you something, man. He's an absolute – he's been fantastic. 14 bombs for uh, the Guardians this year, playing very good baseball. So um, kudos to him. And not only that, he brings a lot of energy – uh, out there sure on the does. field uh, the dude is an absolute maniac uh, he's knocked basically half the team over when he comes in after some of these big home runs uh, <laughs> your boy Josh Naylor Mr. Saga there Co Pharrell coast to coast Carver High and Cam in for Scotty Sports Grid Sports Grid Radio we'll come back more baseball to do right after this Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Gee, that's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Julio Jones. Uh, finds a new home after one year in Tennessee very underwhelming year in Tennessee with the Titans goes to the Bucks. when they have the weapons that they have right with Godwin he's going to be open and that's the thing you, you get you get inspired like you see Tom Brady you see this Tampa Bay team the legacy the Super Bowl like you're just looking at these guys going okay I can make this work. the sports grid network
we're back for El Coast to Coast on a Thursday. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you aboard. I didn't realize how far into the round Willie Z and Cam Young were, uh, Cam. Uh, I only got a couple holes here. I need Cam Young to make a couple birdies and get things rolling here uh, as we got him in a matchup against Willie Z. Uh, Let's go here. Uh, and it's getting yeah, I found out, Carver. I put uh, three bucks on Lips at 125 to one first round leader. He's oh! five under on David Lipsky. So wish me luck. Come on, Lips. I need how many holes go, does he got go left? How many he's holes left? Five, six, and he's five okay. under. Okay. Hey, get hot with the putter. Even if he, even if yeah. even a share there, even a split for you there, Cam. A little three way chop even gets you some bucks yeah. back. So I know you want a little more than that, but even if they can at least get I you do. that. Uh, it's a nice thing. Come on, Lips. Uh, Lips, <laughs> your boy Lipsky. Uh, the A's <laughs> swept the Astros, as we discussed, 4-2 to two yesterday. Astros with a miserable three days out at the ashtray against Oakland. I'm going to uh, bypass the Tiger walk-off against the Padres, Cam, because I don't want to give you the pain. Uh, I know that you had the Padres yesterday. They ended up walking it off. We're going to pass yep. that one uh, today. I can't well, listen to you. it myself either. The Dodgers beat the Nats 7-1. to one. They avoided the sweep uh, at the hands of the lowly Nationals. Here's Nationals general manager Mike Rizzo, Cam. Uh, he was on the fan in D.C. yesterday, of course, talking about Juan Soto trade deadline less than a week away. He says he has a bunch of options. Uh, that he could do with Juan Soto. Here's Rizzo. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't explore all the options that uh, now present us. You know, we've got a pretty good option. We've got we've got uh, the uh, talented Juan Soto for you know two and a half more seasons. That's that's our option A. That's a good one. But we also have to think about uh, about options of, you know B and C and uh, and how we uh, you know my job is to uh, to make this organization a consummate winner again. Like we did, you know, from 2012 to 2019, you know, be a consistent winner. And, you know, I have to figure out ways uh, as the caretaker of this franchise to to make us a championship organization for a long, a long time to come. There's Mike Rizzo, Cam. He also said uh, during that interview that he would not trade the bad contract of Patrick Corbin just to take less back uh, for Juan Soto. said he will not do that. Uh, he wants whatever Juan Soto is worth, uh, so that's not a way to potentially uh, get less for Soto by taking that fat, awful contract. He even called it a bad contract himself. You love when general managers call out their bad moves. <laughs> that's a bad contract. I signed him to it, but it's a bad contract. Yeah. It's a horrible contract. <laughs> Horrible. But you got to think, though, Carver. I, I know Soto, we talk about the money, but that Corbin deal, they got to get that off the books. Like, you know what I mean? Like, somebody's got to – yeah. can't you do both? Like, I don't know. Look at all why options, not, as he not says. Both? Like, why not yeah. both? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, listen, as we know, Cam, anything that a general manager wants to say out in public five days or six days before the trade deadline, uh, we take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we we sure. don't know how much – I highly doubt that he's putting all his cards on the table uh, out in the media uh, less than a week away from the trade deadline. So I'm sure that there is a will uh, for somebody to get that done. All right, we have got games tonight, Cam. Uh, big slate in baseball for a Thursday. I like it a lot. The Royals are coming into the Bronx to take on the Yankees tonight. We already mentioned that Singer – is going to be starting for KC. Jamison Shots of Tyone gets the ball for the Yankees. Minus 255 for them tonight, plus 210 now for the Royals. This total at 8.5 in the Bronx. How do you play this one, Cam? I'm actually surprised, Garver. I thought the Yankees would be bigger favorites than that with the Royals rolling in after. Like, I know it sounds big, but I, we've seen way bigger before. This is kind of an interesting line. I think it's actually short for the Yankees, but... Uh, I don't know. What do you do? Yankees is a parlay piece. If the Royals go in and beat the Yankees tonight, people are going to lose their minds. Oh, I'll tell you, a lot of New York uh, and, and Yankee fans with their tickets, that's going to be in every Yankee fan's parlay. Like, dangerous game, but the Yankees got to take care of business, even though Singer's pitching uh, well. You would think so. Uh, and if, looks, and we've had a bad couple of days here with tacking heavy favorites onto the back of parlays, Cam. Uh, we mm -hmm. have had a rough yeah. couple of days with that. Uh, between the Astros and the Dodgers, Blue Jays last night. I mean, we have uh, really been getting burned 
with that theory. So tread lightly. Uh, Yankees minus yep. 255 uh, tonight in that game. I might like the over, Cam. I think I might stay away Good from the call. side. Might like the over eight and a half with Singer and shots of Tyone uh, going in that game. Phillies and the Buckos out at PNC in Pittsburgh. Zach Wheeler against Thompson. Minus 198 now for Philadelphia, plus a buck 66 for the Pirates. This total is now down to seven and a half from eight earlier in the day. Yeah, I, I've already bet the Pirates earlier. That line's climbing. I think this is a very, very important – sorry, uh, the, the Phillies. I think this line is going to go up. Wouldn't be surprised if it's over $2. Big series. These guys are getting their act together. They're playing with a little more confidence. I like it. Give me – you know what? I'll take the Phillies in a parlay piece, but I'm going to take them on the run line as well, Carver. Let's go. We'll have to lay that big I juice. think I might, might have the third piece for your parlay. How about we do the big heavy money line parlay tonight? Phillies, Yankees, and Blue Jays, Cam. You want to do the heavy money line parlay? With those three you know teams what, Carver, at 7 o'clock? It sounds great. It sounds great. And then you'll Somebody see me at about 9.57 yeah. p.m. with a cold beer and just, like, sweating profusely <laughs> and just absolutely smashing things, throwing converters, going, ah, yeah. why'd I add the Blue Jays? A coochie? I don't know what to do. Uh, I like Ale- the Blue Jays. Ale- Alexander for the Tigers. And, yes, Kikuchi going for the Blue Jays tonight at minus 235. Uh, that totals nine and a half. Uh, Blue Jays, Yankees, Phillies. I got to do it just for a gas now, Cam. I'll uh, do I'm it, too. But Kikuchi's playing for a job, uh, another bad outing, and he'll be uh, he'll be your starting pitcher for the Buffalo Bisons moving forward. He already had his rehab well, starts and stuff. Like, this guy's hanging on by a thread. Like, if he gets shelled again by the Tigers, the party's over. Well, if he, that means that's good for him, at least he can go over to Duff's or Fitzgerald's and get himself a nice uh, 12 pack of hot wings. Uh, he can get some good yes. wings over at Duff's or Fitzgerald's if yeah, he gets sent back uh, to play in Scion Field over there. <laughs> Guardians and the Red Sox tonight. Uh, McKenzie and Crawford minus 122. Road favorites for the Guardians tonight. This total is up to nine and a half from nine earlier in the day. You know what? I kind of lean Cleveland so far. I'll, I, we'll, we'll dig deeper into this game, but McKenzie can be good. I just don't trust the Red Sox. Uh, Cleveland's the play. These guys just, they're not afraid. They're going in there. They got good young hitters. We talked about Naylor. I, I like this team, man. They just, night after night, they give you a good effort over two. Lots of runs in this game. Both yes. teams should be able to rake, right, Carver? R-U-N-S. Runs, 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 baby. Runs, Let's runs. go. Just like last night. Fire it up. Seattle. After getting swept by the Astros last week at home, now go to Minute Maid to take them on for four. We've got your Kitty and Gilbert Grape tonight. Minus 138 for Houston, plus 118 for Seattle. This total is up to eight and a half from eight earlier in the day. I'll tell you, man. Seattle might have won that game against Texas. Houston coming off those losses to Oakland, they're going to be pissed. Gilbert Grape might get, like, squashed. We're going to make a nice fine uh, wine out of Gilbert Grape tonight. I think the Astros might like run this guy out early in the game. I like Houston Carver. I I like the Mariners tonight. Uh, Cam, listen, Houston's not playing well this week. They're coming back. Now you would think that they would get a little refocused after a Mm -hmm. miserable three days out at the ashtray. But I feel like the Mariners got themselves going again after that series against the Rangers. They're playing a little better baseball, embarrassed after last weekend at home against this team. I'm going to take Seattle tonight and Gilbert Grape. Uh, now, they might not win the series. Astros might beat them up the next three days. But I think that Seattle will get them here uh, on night number one of that series. All right, Cam. We have a couple of other games still to get to, including the Dodgers, who have not played well in Colorado this year. I will give you those numbers when we come back. Uh, and then we'll get into some NFL, including Kyler Murray uh, calling the impromptu press conference uh, earlier today to talk about things that uh, it's just he's unbelievable. Pharrell coast to coast. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty. We're back on the grid right after this.
the early line. Those signs of Bryce Harper coming back earlier than later, not going to be the case at this point. And from a Phillies perspective, you want him back as soon as possible, but not at the, hey, I'm going to do some long-term damage to my thumb. It makes sense here to sit back, take it easy. You're still in the wild card race. Would you like him back next week? Sure you would, but he's probably not coming back till mid-August at the earliest at this time. And maybe the Phillies are taking it a little bit slower, a la Mike Trout out for the LA Angels. Only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. I'm going over with Rodon tonight. Diamondback strike out a lot. I'm going to take a chance. You know what? Yeah, might as well make it uh, all. I'm going all overs. Hopefully, I go three and one or better. Carver, I'm with you on Rodon. Even when the, the Dodgers hit him, in that start, he gets to his strikeout prop. You know, it's either going to be seven or more. I think we can get not eight, eight, nine in this spot too. I, I, I love it. I, you know what? And what we love, Carver, just like Coach James Young. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. It should be no surprise. It should be no shocker to see Ohio State as the favorites to win the Big Ten Conference once again. They did not a season ago, going down against Michigan minus two hundred, Kevin is the strongest odds to win any conference across the entire country, power or group of five. That is what is expected for Ohio State in 2022 and a run through the Big Ten Conference. The Sports Grid Network. And we are back for El Coast to Coast on a Thursday. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you with us. And Cam, I have to tell you and everybody at home, stay on the grid all day, even when you're not tuned in. Please follow us on Twitter at Sports Grid, at Sports Grid TV. Everything you could ever want uh, from a social media account. You've got clips from the shows, you've got updated odds, you've got breaking news. Uh, it all happens, Cam, right there on Ed Sports Grid and Ed Sports Grid TV. Some great clips of uh, Cam Stewart on there as well, Cam. I see great pics <laughs> from you all the time on that social media account. I saw I, you, all the laughs. I mean, you and Gabe and uh, Dubsy and uh, Coach in the quad box, uh, basically. And Sharapan, you had Sharapan and Coach in there. You're all in the quad box having a blaster and game time decisions with the pitch. Oh, no, that get gets out like of control. That. Yeah, we get out of control. When the four of us are there, no, it, it gets pretty crazy. It gets stupid. Uh, it certainly does. <laughs> uh, let's get – we got three more baseball games to get to uh, for tonight. The Dodgers are in Colorado. Start of a four-game series, Cam. Now, they're minus 215. Uh, tonight they have Tyler Anderson going Rockies with Urena are plus 180 the total is at 12 they have played Colorado six times in Denver this year Rockies have won four out of the six games against the Dodgers at home also Anderson has faced the Rockies four times this year and the Rockies have won all four games 
that Anderson has pitched against them this year. Now it wasn't Anderson's fault in all of them, you but zero and four when Anderson starts. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to uh, get the get the pooches out for this one, Cam? You yeah. want to get the pooches out? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> down boy, down boy. Okay, I got milk bones. Relax. We're taking Colorado. I think it's it. You know what? You just said it, Carver. Look at the price. They're at home. They play these guys tough. Everybody gets up for the Dodgers. The Rockies play them well. That price is out of control. I'll take my chances. If the Dodgers murder them, so be it. Give me the big pooch hey, in the Rockies. How about plus money for the run and a half too, Cam? Plus yep, 115 so. to get a run and a half uh, yep. for the Rockies tonight, too. Oh. Uh, so that's something to think about as well. I'll probably be on that. The Rangers into Anaheim to take on the Angels after getting swept in Seattle. The Otani takes the mound. We told you earlier, five straight starts for Otani with double-digit strikeouts. They are minus 225 now. This total is 7.5. Your boy Howard, the Wolfman, uh, going for the Rangers tonight in Anaheim. I'd be careful about the Angels. They had problems with Kansas City. I know they won that last they game, Carver. Problems but problems with everybody. That's they the thing. Problems How problems you... with everybody. Otani's <laughs> awesome, but I'm not laying 220, and it's going to go up uh, against the Rangers. Sure, the Rangers, you know, the, the, the pitching matchup totally favors the Angels in this spot, but that price is insane. I actually might take a shot with Texas as a dog here. Uh, or you know what? Look, How about the over? How about the over? We're going to get some runs? I, or is that, I do is that think, a sucker line? I, th- uh, I think the total's a little short. I, I think he got that down to seven and a half because Otani's pitching. Uh, just because he's collected a lot of strikeouts. I mean, he gave up some runs to the Braves in his last start. Uh, coming yeah. out of the all-star break. So I, I wouldn't be scared, Cam, of taking that over seven and a half tonight uh, if you so choose. But the Angels, like, they have a problem with everybody. That's because yeah. they suck. I mean, let's just do. get down to it. I don't, I don't care if they have Otani. And how about Trout? He's another one. Uh, that the back issue is something that's going to bother him for the rest of his career. Did you see that story, Cam? Yeah. That Trout's back issue that he hasn't played with the last couple weeks, that's going to be like a permanent deal for him going forward. He's, He's not going to play younger, too. the rest like- of his life. What's no. the deal? Like, you talk about the contract, and I know when he plays, he leads in war and blah, 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 Carver. But if you really look at the numbers, yeah. the Angels are the same damn team with him in or out without the lineup. Sure, he puts up that's great right. statistics, but it doesn't put them over the top. So that's a lot of money. Uh, it certainly is. Finally tonight, the Cubbies head out to the Bay, San Francisco, to take on the Giants. We have the Steel Mill and the Wood Chipper tonight. Alex Wood and Justin Steele. Uh, getting going. The Cubbies plus 124, Giants minus 146. This total is up to eight and a half from eight earlier in the day. Giants a sneaky good over team at home, Cam. They do score a lot of runs there and they're coming off getting whacked by the Diamondbacks the last few days. Well, Carver, let's put on our welding helmets. Blowtorch. Let's just melt that steel, baby. We're just going to absolutely, it is done. It's going to be flakes of nothing at the end of this game. Steel gets rocked. We're going back to the Giants. They're at home. Let's go, Carver. Let's go. G-Men, finally. They explode tonight on the Steel Man. I am on the over in that game, Cam. Uh, Give me the over eight and a half uh, for the Cubbies and the Giants. The Steel Mill and the Wood Chipper uh, tonight in the Bay. There you go. Night in baseball. Let's cash a lot of tickets, Cam, uh, tonight. Props and the games. Let's make it happen. All right. NFL training camps in full swing now. A couple days, everybody's been in the house. And what's one of the biggest stories, Cam, from the first week of training camp? Well, One of the small details of Kyler Murray's contract getting leaked out uh, to the world. And what is that small detail? That he is required to have four hours of independent film study every single game week. Apparently, Kyler isn't too happy, Cam, that that information has been released into the wild. In (laughs) fact, he decided to blame the media for this stuff happening. Uh, Here's Kyler Murray today uh, with his press conference. Yeah, I feel... Uh, it's necessary, you know, um, with what's going on as far as regarding me and, and the things that are being said about me. Um, it's it's almost, you know, to think that I can accomplish everything that I've accomplished in my career um, and not be a student of the game and not um, not not have that passion and not not take this serious is is almost it's disrespectful and it's it's almost it's, it's almost a joke, you know. Um, it's to me, it's um, I'm flattered 
you know, I'm, I'm honestly flattered that y'all think that at my size I can go out there and not prepare for the game and not, um, you know, not take it serious. It's, 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 it's disrespectful, I feel like, to my peers, to all the, to all the, the great athletes and great players that are in this league. Um, this game's too hard. Uh, to, to play the position that I play in this league, um, it's, it's, it's too hard. Cam, um, look, he, he can say it's disrespectful and all this stuff. The, the media didn't create some narrative that Kyler Murray doesn't prepare for games and watch film. The media did not bring that up out of nowhere in thin air. The team put it in his contract that yes. he has to watch film four hours a week. This wasn't made out of thin air. If there's anybody he wants to be mad at, it should be the team and not the media because he had to know somebody was eventually going to put that out into the wild. Excellent point, Carver. You nailed, you hit the nail on the head. I love too. Right after the contract gets the shirt, easy money. There, it's, come on. Yeah. Like, out of all, all the things you could have wore, why just wear a Cardinals shirt? Like you know what I mean? It's just, whatever. Like it's the little things that I notice. I'm like really, and that's the thing. Obviously, there is a problem, or else they wouldn't have put it in the damn contract. They're saying you got into. And we're not talking about studying with buddies. You have independent. Take a look at the damn playbook. And you got to read it. It's actually funny. Me and Gabe talked about this on Game Time Decisions. Old coaches used to put, like, money in the book for, like, Michael Vick, like thousands of dollars in the pages. He returned the book. The money's still in the same place. That was their old trick to say, oh, I guess you didn't read the book. Like, that's the thing. So, you know what? Obviously, horrible playoff game against the Rams. He has to be better. And I don't think he's worth that contract, to be honest with you. I think every quarterback who's next in line to get a raise doesn't deserve that kind of money. That's just my opinion. I think Kyler Murray is very talented, but no, 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 no. Not at that price. Sorry. Uh, no. Uh, and in fact, he did an interview with the New York Times in January or whatever it was, which probably didn't help. One of the reasons why this is in his contract, where he basically said he doesn't feel like he needs to watch as much film, that he sees the game clear, just going in and doing it. Uh, so he's done this to himself. It's just it's nonsense for him to go up there. Uh, and drag the media into it because it's an easy thing to do. Um, awful job by Kyler Murray today. That's going to end really well in Arizona, Cam. I can see it already. Fresh new contract signed. I can already see that it's going to end poorly. The biggest quarterback battle in training camp is going to be in Pittsburgh, where we have, of course, Mitchell Trubisky coming over. Uh, most likely, it sounds like, going to win the job. But we have Kenny Pickett, first-round pick, also in the mix. Here is Mike Tomlin, Cam. He will not micromanage the quarterback situation. So all these guys are going to come in and ask him every day. Don't even waste your time. Tomlin's not going to do it every single day at camp. And I'll say this, because I understand that that's the elephant in the room. Um, we're not going to micromanage or overmanage this quarterback competition. Um, the depth chart will not rest on every throw. I know that you guys will want to ask me every day and every throw, um, but we're going to be a little bit more steady than that. I think it's important from a leadership perspective to, 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 to not overmanage it, to not be uh, too impulsive. And, and so that's what I've relayed to those guys and, and our actions will continue to display that mindset. I think, Cam, that's the absolute best way uh, that you can handle a situation yes. like this is to not do that because they're going to ask him anyway, whether he stands up there or not and says he's not going to do it. They are going to ask him. I mean, you had Steeler people who cover the Steelers were sitting out in the stands at the first practice yesterday, like charting um, how many snaps every guy took, who they threw to, how far yep. they threw the ball. This is going to get nauseating uh, by the middle of August, Cam, the Steeler quarterback thing. It'll be Trubisky, by the way. Yeah, I like that too. I think Mitchell Trubisky has earned the right to win the job there. Pick it, you know, just sit there and learn. And if Trubisky falters, then you'll have your chance. That's the whole problem, Carver. It's a new era. When we grew up, and you know, I don't want to sound like the old guy, but quarterbacks used to learn, you know, from the other guy that was there. And then you get better. Throwing guys in the fire, it works for some if you have confidence, but it also can ruin guys. It can ruin their career. Achilles Smith and others like that. He's Schuler, you know. Rick Meyer was good for one year. Then he was a train wreck. Dan McGuire, lots of guys. Yeah. It would not be a bad thing for the Steelers if he does not take one snap this year. It would not be a bad thing. Coast to coast. We keep rolling right after this.
Fantasy Sports Today. The Braves, boy, they just they make all the right moves, don't they? Spencer Strider, he's a reliever. No, never mind. He's a starter. 8,700 tonight for the Atlanta Braves. This guy's going to be pitching in the postseason for sure. I'm just obsessed with Spencer Strider, right? This this eighth inning guy who then comes to being a starting pitcher, and he is just blown away some teams. He did have a bad start against the Washington Nationals his last time out. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and them. Being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early line. Huh? Looking out to trade Joe Mixon. Huh? Maybe T. Higgins is going to be up for an extension. We can't give that to him. <laughs> Jamar Chase, everybody loves him. We can't afford him because of our quarterback here. Let's see how Cincinnati has it because they have the future right in the palm of their hand. If they sign their young core to long-term deals when they come up, the Bengals are going to have a good franchise. But good franchise and saying the Bengals usually doesn't go hand-in-hand. Hand. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Julio Jones uh, finds a new home after one year in Tennessee, very underwhelming year in Tennessee with the Titans, goes to the Bucks. When they have the weapons that they have, right, with Godwin, he's going to be open, and that's the thing. It, it get, you get inspired. Like, you see Tom Brady, you see this Tampa Bay team, the legacy, the Super Bowl. Like, you're just looking at these guys going, okay, I can make this work. The Sports Grid Network. back for El Coast to Coast on a Thursday. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty right here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you aboard here. They're going to the 16th Cam uh, up in Detroit. Of course, the featured group for us uh, is Willie Z and Cameron Forever Young. A bogey for Willie Z gets him back to one under. I believe we're yep. even now uh, here uh, no, with Cam Young. I think they're winning. Oh, we got a, a switcheroo. Little switcheroo here, Cam. We got yep. Young back in the lead. Uh, this is huge yes, because uh, as bad as Homa uh, is playing. I believe that Joel Damon is playing worse. Uh, so we have Homa and Cameron Young parlayed together in that matchup uh, bet up there in Detroit. Uh, I'm, I don't think that the Gim Reaper is having a good showing right now. So we'll have to check in on him later. Uh, is Charlie Hoffman still burning up the course, Cam? Do we still have him? Yeah, he's uh, 600 and he almost made an, another one. Like this guy, uh, Hoffman's the only guy right now because I'm looking at. Uh, for anybody else that could be a leader, nope, they're mostly all done, right? Like Lipsky's 500, got... but he's through 15. Kitty Amma's 500 through through 15. Uh, it's Charlie. It's Charlie's the only guy that can catch Finau and Taylor Pendrith, it seems like. Carver. And he's got and he's got six holes to go. You know, know, he's got six holes to go and he's two back. So not only uh, does he got the potential to catch Finau and Pendrith, maybe even pass them? Maybe those guys were right, Cam. Maybe there is a nine under out there uh, from old Chuck Hoffman uh, if he can get it done here over the last <laughs> few holes. Your boy Chuck. Uh, I wanted to go back to the Steelers uh, for a moment. We just heard from Tomlin before the break. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing if Pickett sits the entire year. You're right. The new thing now in the NFL over the last 10 years is let's rush the first round quarterback. Let's see him immediately. The fans want a taste. They want the shiny new toy. Sometimes, Cam, 
in certain cases, it is better to watch, to learn, maybe play a game at the end of the year to get your feet wet. That's yeah. obviously the scenario that happened with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, and that worked out pretty well uh, in the long run. He did not play his first year except for that last uh, game in Week 17. Steelers at 7.5 this year, Cam. Minus 105 to the over, minus 115 to the under. This is a team that has never finished worse than 500 since Mike Tomlin has been the head coach. And, Cam, I don't think they will this year either. I like the over 7.5 at minus 105. Couldn't agree more. If Trubisky starts too, too, he's a good athlete. He won't do crazy things. Just play the system, guys. You got a great defense there. There's no need to get crazy. That's the thing. And pound, 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 pound. That's going to be old school. They have weapons. Hey, you talk, you talk about these guys. Fre Freermuth, the tight end, and all these other guys. Like The Steelers are a mean team with a very, very solid Solid defense cover. I'm with you. I think they can get nine. I think the Ravens are going to regress. If Trubisky starts and isn't doesn't do crazy, stupid things, which he won't because he'll be benched, over. I'm with you. Give me the give me the Steelers over as well. I, I actually, it's funny you say the Ravens. I think I was talking to this either with Lisi on our show on the radio side, uh, either one night this week or, or with somebody else. I feel like the Ravens are kind of getting left a little under the radar, Cam. Uh, when you think about that AFC North, like they were kind of cruising last year until Lamar got hurt. And like they were cruising with like a whole bunch of other guys injured as well. Lamar got hurt and it obviously derailed their entire season. He comes back this year. Everybody talks about the Bengals because they made the Super Bowl. Everybody yeah. talks about the Steelers because they're the Steelers. Everybody talks about the Browns because they have this whole situation with Deshaun Watson, which by the way, Cam, I thought for sure. We would get that we this are, week it's while Thursday, me and you were doing the show. I, I, I thought. Wait, what's tomorrow? And then we have the weekend? These friggin' exhibition games start next week, the Hall of Fame game. NFL, what are you doing to Cleveland? Like, if I was a Cleveland Brown, like, in, in ownership, I'd be losing my mind right now. Like, I thought, I thought for sure we would have that announcement while me and you were in for Scott all week. Hey, I agree. you know what? You know what the NFL likes doing sometimes, Cam? Fridays at 4 or 5 o'clock, going into the yeah, weekend. Right. They love to Actually, drop news like do. that. Remember, the <laughs> point, you loosen the tie 3 o'clock, put it out there, let's go for drinks, Barb. We're done. Deshaun Watson news, That's, we're out the door. Deal with it. That, that could be <laughs> a classic NFL tomorrow, Friday, summer Friday, first week of yep. training camp. Boom, Deshaun Happy Watson, hour. eight games. Deshaun Watson season. They'll drop that at 4.30, 5 <laughs> o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, but as let me get back to my original point. Ravens, yeah. it seems like, going a little under the radar in that division, and they're getting all their guys that were hurt last year back. Dobbins, uh, Peters, all the guys on defense. Lamar will be back healthy. I don't think there's enough talk about the Ravens. See, Carver, we agree on a lot of stuff. I disagree with you. And Lamar Jackson okay. plays that game, and I think he's one hit away from being in bigger trouble. His frame, the way you play. I saw it with Robert Griffin the third. It's a dangerous game as a skinny quarterback, and he's taking major hits. You remember the Bills' playoff game? It's one of those things. He's not going to get any faster. It can only get worse after this. I still think he needs to work on his accuracy of his balls, and the weapons that they have at the receiver position are pedestrian at best. Dobbins back at the running back, that's good. That's good. There's issues, though. These guys were lucky to win so many games with uh, with Tucker's leg, too, and stuff. They play with fire a lot of the time. I don't know. You're right. Maybe you're right. I'm just down on the Ravens. I just don't think they're as good. I don't think they're a great football team. I think they're pretty average, to, to say the least. That's just my opinion. Though. No, I understand. And I just think that a couple of the other teams, like the Bengals, Cam, I'm not, not in. I'm going to bet them to miss the playoffs. I'm going to bet wow. they're under. I think, I think that they're the classic. We made the Super Bowl. Everybody kind of – and a very surprising Super Bowl pick at that. Nobody thought at this time last year the Bengals would make the Super Bowl. The classic, make the Super Bowl out of nowhere. People think that you're back. This is, you're, you're the new hot team in the league, and then they go and miss the yeah. playoffs the next year. That's kind of where I'm thinking uh, for the Bengals. As much as I like Burrow, Cam, uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking uh, when it comes to him. That's just me. <laughs> no, I understand. I think, no, the thing is, the Ravens are one of those teams that it's a contrast. Like, you meet people like me, and we meet people like you, and that's the way it is. It's a, it's kind of like overrated, underrated type of thing. Some people don't think they're going to win games. Other people think, like, I can't believe how low their win total is. People, that's one team that's very polarizing. People have 
major different opinions on that club. I just think Deshaun. I I, I just think Jackson. He's got to he's got to figure it out. He's got to throw better balls, and he's got to avoid the big hits, or they're or they're doomed. Well, that has always been uh, the bugaboo with him. Cam is being a better thrower of the football down the field, and like you said, taking hits because you can't run the ball as much as he did his first two years. And I thought he was throwing the ball a little bit better last year, and bit. less. Uh, and less, so we'll see if that progression continues. I didn't realize that Big Ben was running around either uh, with a lot of quotes. Big Ben, who retired, of course, uh, not playing anymore. He's had a lot to say, though, Cam. Uh, called uh, most of today's players me first instead of team first. There was a lot of guys on the Steelers who took some offense to that, including Cam Hayward, uh, who kind of gave Ben the business back. Uh, so can Ben go away now, Cam? Uh, isn't he... Done? Retired? Why do we need to keep hearing from Ben? He still thinks he can well, play. The thing maybe? Is, I guess that's why. Some of those dudes were amazing when you were on the team and played great. Like, you know what I mean? But I will say this about Ben Roethlisberger. There's one thing I will say. Nobody took a beating like Ben Roethlisberger the way that guy just took yes. hits and continued to play. I'll give him an A-plus for toughness, but an F for talking after retirement. Go hit the golf course. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, Steelers. You You're done. Let's move forward. You cannot do that. That's true. Let's go to Aaron Rodgers next. He held court in Green Bay after practice. And if you remember last weekend, Cam, we had the uh, Devontae Adams. I'm going from one Hall of Fame quarterback to another with Derek Carr, which had some people, of course, scratching their heads a little. So Aaron decided to have a little fun uh, at the expense of his former number one wide receiver, talking about his new number one wide receiver, Alan Lazard. Here's Rodgers. I mean, it's always tough going from Hall of Famer to Hall of Famer. <laughs> uh, you know, from Devontae to, to Alan, it's going to be, uh, you know, a transition. But he's capable of a lot. And the way things have gone with the reps and the guys that we've had here and the targets that we've uh, we've you know, doled out. He hasn't had a ton of opportunities, but he, you know, he's, since his first day here, he's, he's turned heads, and so it's not surprising him to go out and have a really consistent day today. But he's been working hard. Uh, he has a lot to prove, I think, uh, to himself and other people, maybe to the team uh, as well. So I like a hungry Alan Lazard, uh, you know, and, and it'll be an adjustment for us, but I'm, I'm uh, happy with day one. There was Aaron Rodgers, Cam, uh, you know, having a little fun saying uh, Alan Lazard, uh, a Hall of Famer. Now, look, jokes aside, that wide receiving core looks a lot different when you take Devontae Adams, Valdez Scantling. You know, they've lost a couple of guys from that group. Now, Rodgers is Rodgers. He's going to make a lot of guys look a lot better than they actually are. But sometimes these guys like Lazard and Valdez Scanning look good because there was so much attention on Devontae Adams. I don't think they have that guy now, Cam, that could take all that attention away, and it might be a little tougher for some of these guys like Alan Lazard. I'm going to tell you something, Carver. We'll say it here again. Gabe and I talked about it. I think he's in agreement. I think the Vikings win that division. Aaron Rodgers oh. is a year older. I think they're getting, you know, Bakhtiari's banged up that offensive line. I think Green Bay, like all the glory times, are still a good team. But I think this is Minnesota's division to win. As they got a young defense, they're going to get better. That's what I'm saying. I see regression from the Green wow. Bay Packers. Rodgers will do his thing, but that's my that that's just one of my picks. I'm taking the Vikings. Cam getting getting the Viking horn out. <laughs> Skull. Right on there. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Nice job, uh, Cam. Nice price for the Vikings, by the way, yes. uh, to maybe win. Uh, that NFC North. Let's get to this next guy, Russell Wilson. I know you love this guy, Cam. Former Steeler quarter, uh, Seahawk quarterback, now in Denver after the trade this offseason. Some of the stuff that he does, I do scratch my head. Like, did you see the pictures of him, Cam, yesterday? He rolled up in this enormous Jeep or truck or whatever it was. The tires were like 12 feet off the ground. He gets out with wearing his own jersey, the number three Denver throwback. Like, <laughs> it's very bizarre, and it's tough to take. Here he is yesterday, uh, just all smiles, being in Denver now with the Broncos. Uh, here's this Russell Wilson, phony cam. Here he is. It felt like a game, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, we were getting after it, um, you know, ones versus ones. 
uh, just to go back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the speed of it all. Um, and so that's how we practice all, you know, um, you know, OTAs for the most part, you know, it was just uh, high level, you know, is, this well, is, you know, uh, this is why it's great to be here I mean, just because of the high level of practice guys are putting into it. Um, like I said, anytime you, you, you want to be successful, you got to put the work in. There's, there's no, there's no magic pill. There's no hidden tricks. There's no nothing. It's just, are you going to do the work? Are you going to do everything it takes? Are you going to sacrifice every day? And that's what we're doing. That's what we've done. And, and what we did today doesn't mean anything tomorrow. And what we did today doesn't mean anything tomorrow. So I'm excited about it. Uh, it was so cool to see the fans out here today, too. This is my first time, oh, obviously, so cool. my first practice. So cool. I feel like uh, it was my rookie year all of again, but I don't know. I got about 3,475 days of experience on top of it. So it's, uh, it feels all brand new, but yet also um, something that I've, I, I, uh, I feel like I've always dreamed of, you know, just to continue to just do what I love to do. So um, every day, you know, I, I, I get to focus on joy and just loving the game serious? I get to play. So grateful to be here. Thank you guys so much. And uh, go Broncos. Let's ride. Yeah, let's ride. It's just, Ken, everything sounds like a motivational speech. Like uh, it's what he is, Carver. It's the it's power like, of positivity with Russell Wilson. He just, can fall, break his neck in the kitchen, and go, you know what? I'm going to have a great day today. I love I don't life. Know. It's too much for me. I'm back after this. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small place. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. How realistic is it that Donovan Mitchell plays for the Knicks this upcoming season? Yeah, of course, the New York Post reported everything but the Statue of Liberty, and they basically asked for the Statue of Liberty to be hijacked and sent to Salt Lake City. They wanted Quentin Grimes, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel mm. Quickly, Deuce McBride, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six, six first round draft picks. The, from the Sports Knicks. Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. But Trevor Lawrence did run, uh, I mean, a fair amount in college, right? 18 rushing Absolutely. touchdowns, 1,000 rushing yards in three seasons. Remember, they take the sack yards away, so he actually was a little bit more effective than that. And, and, and you know, to be honest, I mean, it does seem that Urban Meyer was maybe the worst head coach that the NFL has seen in, I don't know, 10 years, right? Didn't, didn't know players' names, belittling assistant coaches. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The favorite is Paul Goldschmidt at plus 110. We know that war matters. Could these defensive superstars actually factor into this conversation because of how it boosts their overall wins above replacement? This year, aren't we doing that? Is anybody right now out there watching this show going, my goodness, now's the time to strike on Paul Goldschmidt? Absolutely not. Only on Sports Grid. And we're back, 
Frell, coast to coast on a Thursday. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty. Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you with us. Uh, the fans, Cam, they always clamor for today in sports history. 1976, the White Sox throw a combined no-hitter against the A's. 84, Olympic Games opened up in Los Angeles. 85, Lou Brock inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. 1989, Dale Murphy 14th player in Major League history to hit two homers in the same inning. 1991, El Presidente, Dennis Martinez, the 13th perfect game in Major League history. How about 1994, MLB players decide to strike on August 12th. How did Kenny Rogers celebrate that in 1994? By throwing a perfect game for the Rangers that night. Here we go. On the pitch, swung on, line to center. Greer is there, he's calling, he's got it. Hello, perfect game. Kenny Rogers, mobbed on the mound. 27 up, 27 down on July 28th. Kenny Rogers has pitched the first perfect game in Texas Ranger history. The bench has erupted. They have mobbed Kenny Rogers. What a scene in the first year of the ballpark in Arlington. Man, Kenny Rogers, he stole a lot of money from the Yankees. Uh, the next <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Rogers stole a lot of money from the Yankees. Good. You guys got uh, the El Presidente, El Perfecto. El, that was a good El one Perfecto. too. Perfecto. Yeah, yeah. Ninety-seven. Messier leaves the Rangers to sign with the Canucks. Two thousand nine. Mark Burley retires the first seventeen batters he faces in his first start. Since he threw a perfect game the start before that, that's 45 consecutive batters retired. 2012, the Twins send Francisco Liriano to the White Sox. 2013, the MLB writers don't elect a single player to the Hall of Fame. Good. They shouldn't in the last couple years either. 2015, the Blue Jays trade for Troy Tulowitzki. What a bust that was, Cam. 2020, John McNamara, former Red Sox manager, passed away at the age of 88. Tulowitzki was finished when he went to the Blue Jays. Finished. Yeah, right. I got home.